Here I would like to talk about our recent work on the use of a frequency-dependent partial agent for pH image of mouse kidneys in vivo. The reason why people are interested in pH imaging is because the dysregulation of pH in vivo is associated with many diseases such as cancer or renal tubular acidosis. Therefore, finding a simple method to image tissue pH in vivo is one of the goals in MR imaging research. However, it needs to use pH-sensitive MR constant agent to image pH in vivo. MR spectroscopy is the earliest method to measure tissue pH, where pH was measured by following the pH dependence of proton or phosphorus signals from either endogenous species or exogenous molecules. However, the method of MR spectroscopy is limited by low spatial and temporal resolution compared with MR imaging methods. This slide shows the typical MR imaging agent that have been developed for pH imaging in vivo. Gadolinium DOTA4MP is one of the first T1 based MR constant agent for pH imaging in vivo. This agent was developed by Dr. Dean Service Group over a decade ago. The in vivo application of this agent is, however, limited by a complicated experiment in which the pH sensor and a pH insensitive constitution marker such as gadolinium DOTP have to be sequentially used. Further translation of this agent into human imaging is difficult because dual injection of the agents will double the MR image time and make it less attractive for imaging in clinic. Chemical exchange such as transfer is a relatively new MR image technique. It is possible to design such MR constant agent that can provide a direct measure of the pH without knowing the agent concentration in vivo. This is a unique feature about using such the technique in MR imaging. For example, the dark shast agents like alpamidone and alpromide, and the paracetamol shast agents like ethermium do 3 oaa and ethermium hp do 3 all have to chemically non-equivalent exchangeable pointers, which are pH sensitive. The risk of the sized intensities from the two non-equivalent exchangeable pointers in its agent is dependent on pH but independent of agent concentration. This means the rheumatical method will provide a direct readout of the pH by using these molecules. More recently, a novel rheumatic method was reported by varying precessors and power levels with the use of the dark shasta agents like albacido. In this study, we reported the use of a frequency dependent power shasta agent UPMPS sensor here for pH image of the mouse kidneys in vivo. The unique properties of our new agent is assessed the resonance frequency shifts with pH variations. Our results indicate the frequency dependent power test agent may represent a significant advance over other types of sized agents in terms of providing a more accurate pH measurement in vivo. To understand the design principles for the development of this new agent, and the reason why this new agent is more desirable for pH imaging in vivo. Let's have a brief look at the sized mechanism first. As indicated in this figure here, to generate sized signal, it needs to have two pools of pontons slowly exchanging with each other. The first ponton pool is from agent lab pontons like amide, hydroxy pontons, or bond water molecule pontons. The second point and pool is from backwater molecules. If you saturate the lab point and pool with a frequency selected pulse and then acquire the backwater signal intensity, when the point of exchange between two point and pools are slow, you will see reduced backwater signal intensity due to chemical exchange. This is the mechanism. 
The first example of paramagnetic sized agent was published 15 years ago on this molecule called Eupium dot glasnate. The water exchange rate in such kinds of agent is so slow that when you run a high resolution MR spectrum of this molecule, you will see bound water peak at chemical shift around 50 ppm. If you selectively saturate the bound water signal with a precession pulse and then collect the bulk water signal intensity, you will find the bulk water signal intensity drops significantly at around 50 ppm. This curve is called as sized Z spectrum. In fact, you can get similar sized Z spectrum from small dark magnetic molecules like bacteria acid here. However, the problem with dark magnetic sized MRI is the chemical shift difference between two proton poles is so small that you cannot award the direct stretches of butt water protons when acquiring sensed signals. As the sensed effect is quite sensitive to water exchange rate, it's useful to create responsible agent based on water exchange rate modulation. The first type of sensed responsible agent is based on a change in sensed intensity as a response. Most of sensed response agents fall into this category. For example, this browning gasset contained agent is sensitive to glucose. As you can see from the sensed Z spectrum here, the sensed intensity increases in the presence of glucose, which means the water exchange rate slows down upon glucose bonding. The second type of sensed response agent shows a change both in sensed resonance frequency and in sensed intensity as a response. For example, the sensed profile of this Eupium dot glasnate changes both in sensed intensity and sensed frequency in response to temperature variations. Another example is for this Eupium PS sensor here. The dependence of this uh, final group here results in the delocalization of negative charge to this keto oxygen that uh, directly coordinates to the Eupium metal. This will create a slight increase of the ligand field for the Eupium metal center, which will shift the resonance frequency of the Eupium bond water to the downfield a little. This property is unique because it will allow us to measure pH by either using the rosymetric method or by following the frequency of the sized peak. It will be a remarkable achievement if we can make this agent work in vivo for tumor pH imaging. So we have been working on this for a while. However, sized in vivo imaging in tumors is not easy because the concentration of a sized agent in tumor is normally too low to be detected by sized MR technique post agent injection. As an alternative, we can choose kidney as an immune target because the agent concentration in kidneys can be high enough to be detected by sized MRI within a certain time period post agent injection. It has been long known that the pH of the kidney is gradient, where pH of the inner part is acidic and the outer part of the kidney is close to neutral. In fact, measuring the kidney pH has clinical relevance, as it can be potentially used to diagnose the kidney diseases like renal tubular acidosis. Here are the pulse sequence and the scan parameters used in this preclinical immune study of most kidneys. The pulse sequence used is the static state greater echo with 5 seconds pre-saturation time and 10 megatesla saturation power. The sequence was also modified, being respiratory triggered to reduce most artifacts during data acquisition. The sensed frequency was varied from 60 to negative 60 ppm with 20 to 30 data points for sensed imaging. This will take around 2 or 3 minutes to acquire its sensed image data set. 
to see with scan time. Gating control wasn't used in dynamic studies that investigated the dynamic changes of size signals in kidneys. In terms of sensed imaging data analysis, as sensed signal in vivo suffer from the signal interference from the B0 in homogeneities and the signal interference from the background signals from MT fact, MRI data processing procedures have to be established to resolve the issues of signal interference. Specifically, in the sensed image, the data set here, its voxel will give a unique sensed Z spectrum, like this. Due to the effect of B0 magnetic field in homogeneities, the backwater frequencies in the sensed Z spectrum of some voxels are of zero in positive or negative directions. To correct B0 effect, it's needed to shift the individual spectrum to the center according to the B0 map that were generated from a separated sized experiment. The B0 corrected this spectrum from its voxel was then fitted to double Lorentzian functions to get a sized asymmetric Z spectrum. From where the sensed signal intensity maps at a specific frequencies can be calculated. Finally, based on the pH calibration curve, the final pH map are generated. Now let's see the results. To find the dynamic time range that offers the detectable sensed signal in vivo, the dynamic studies were performed without using respiratory motion control. As indicated in the typical MR images here, if the region of the interest was selected on one of the kidneys, you will get a sensed Z spectrum from its individual image data set required at a different time points post the exam. We can see no sensed signal is detected in the pre scan Z spectrum. And the sensed signal appears at two minutes post an injection and become bigger from four to six minutes post an injection and drops at eight minutes post an injection. Sensed signal is barely detected at twelve minutes post an injection. These dynamic results indicate the optimal time period to detect the sensed signal in kidneys is between 4 to 8 minutes post agent injection. As mentioned earlier, pH Kalman's curve will be required for pH to be accurately measured in vivo to investigate the effects of solution system on the results of pH calibration. The pH calibration curves in this study were measured both in water and in plasma. The interesting thing about this new sensor is two kinds of calibration curve can be created. The first calibration curve is created by following the sensed resonance frequency as a function of pH, while the second calibration curve can be created from the resolved sensed intensities as a function of pH. In this study, we used the resolved sensed intensities at 53 ppm to 46 ppm to create the second pH calibration curve. You may ask, which calibration curve should be used for pH calibration in vivo? The figures on the right give you the answer, which is so the frequency based calibration curve is independent of the solution system where the calibration curve by the asymmetric method is quite sensitive to the solution system. Obviously, the frequency-based method should be used for in vivo pH calibration. Let's see the final in vivo imaging results. Figure A is a sensed spectrum and a symmetric curve from the entire right kidney edge region of interest. Figure B is a sized spectrum and a symmetric curve from a typical voxel collected between 5 to 8 minutes post agent injection. Figure C is B0 maps. Figure D and E are the sized intensity maps at 49 ppm before and after B0 correction. Figure F and Z 
uh, the pH maps of kidneys before and after B0 coaxin. If we have a close look at the pH maps, it's found that the B0 corrected pH maps sold the expected pH gradient across renal cortex modella pervious. Our results indicate B0 correction is necessary to get reliable imaging results. In summary, this study demonstrates pH maps of most kidneys can be measured by following the chemical shift of a pressurized agent without necessarily knowing the agent composition in vivo. This represents a significant advance of a new method over T1-based technique. The frequency-based pressurized agent used in this study appears to be advantage over other types of cell agents because our study indicates in which pH calibration curves created from a symmetric method in other types of cell agents may be sensitive to the solvent system. On the other hand, the frequency-based method may provide a more accurate measurement of the pH in vivo. It is important to note that, like other cell agents, the agent reported in this study is less sensitive than T1-based gadolinium agent. Our endeavors are being made to develop more sensitive frequency-based pressurized agents by incorporating the agent into the polymers or liposomes. And the new sensitive agent could potentially be used for pH imaging in tumors.